I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a really nice uh, mirror and mirror frame. It's uh, American Empire, which would be from 1820 to 1840, somewhere in there. Uh, it's often called an OG mirror because of the shape of this uh, molding here. It seems to have the original glass in it, and it's in really good condition. This was a thrift store find, uh, $4.00 here in Maine and uh, it's got some obvious problems, a little bit of buckling along here, missing veneer in four places. Uh, this corner appears to be loose. I gotta see if I can bring that back together. Uh, it has some buckling veneer here and it's also got an interesting little note on the back. Mahogany mirror, 30 and a half by 21 and a half, OG, purchased from Mrs. Thompson, neighbor in Oak Park, who brought it from her old home in Troy, Vermont. Approximate value, $15. So I want to see if I can take the, this, the, the inner frame, the moldy, molded part of the frame, out of this outer frame. Actually, the first thing I want to do is maybe secure this little bit of uh, writing that's on the back of here, this note, secure it a little bit better. All right, I can set that outer frame aside and do the repairs on it. Um, I've got to glue this frame together, but uh, uh, first thing is take the glass out. I'm not sure where these corner blocks went. Maybe, maybe they were holding the glass in. I think they were. You can see there's a nail in there. Maybe I can work out work it out enough so I can grab it. I'd say that was original equipment. I took this nail out so I could get this this two pieces evened up. It seemed to be holding me back. But when I'm done, I'll put it back. There's still a gap here in the middle, but it, it's come together in the two corners, so that's all you can do. I'll have to fill that in. All right, I've let this uh, dry overnight. Now this, uh, this part of the frame is in pretty good shape, but it has some bubbling and uh, lifting of the veneer just in this area here. But of course this is curved. So I'm going to use some uh, bending plywood for this curve, but I still think I need to make a block uh, in the shape of this big molding. I think I have a piece of wood here big enough. Uh, some of you may recognize this as the cutoff from my uh, extending the bed rails of an antique sleigh bed video.
I need to take off more in this curved area. I got to get a better fit. The wacky wood turned out to be too thick to make the curve, so instead I'm going to use a 16th inch piece of mahogany. Now we can get back to the uh, outer frame. These will be a lot uh, more straightforward. Now there's a separation here in this corner. I should have glued that uh, first, uh, but I'll do it now.
Okay, everything's dried overnight. I'm uh, really anxious to see what this one looks like. <laughs> this old piece came off. I'll have to re-glue that. This was a piece I didn't glue yesterday, but it popped off. This area seems good. I won't really know till I get that glue off. I think I'll take this glue off with a damp rag, and then I'll glue this piece. You have to be patient getting a glue off, but it does uh, just continually rubbing with the damp rag, and it, it all came off. This is down really well. It's not uh, perfectly flat, but that's okay. We'll just polish it up. There's a little lump right there. It's not moving. feels hard. Maybe I'll heat that up and glue it down. I've got to glue this piece anyway. Now the outer frame. Well, okay, the, the, the patches look good. Uh, now I've got to trim them off and sand them. Now you'll notice I'm sanding cross grain here, and that's okay to do on uh, things like frames like this, as long as you sand up really well up to 220. That will eliminate all the scratches. Yeah, and this is typical of a job like this. Uh, sanded this area. There was a crack in the veneer here that I thought wasn't big enough to put a piece of wood in. I was going to putty it. And when I went to do that, sure enough, there's loose veneer all around that. All right, I think I've, I've got all the my repair area sanded, and now I'm going to take a, a fresh piece of 220 and just sand uh, lightly over the entire frame. All right, now I'm going to uh, just pat it off with a little bit of uh, uh, alcohol just to clean it off and to see what my color's like. I've got some uh, walnut dye stain here, and I'm going to stain my new pieces of wood.
All right, now I'm going to pad the whole frame uh, with the same stain. There's a lot of old wood that I sanded that's a little bit lighter. I'm going to see if that brings it in. I may have to brush on a little more. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. Uh, then I'm going to give it a coat of shellac. And in the meantime, I'll get back to the inner frame. That went down great. Now this inner frame uh, doesn't need to be sanded or anything. I'm going to take a damp cloth, get my uh, any glue that's on here off. Uh, then I'm going to pat it with a little alcohol just to clean it. And then I'll pat it with some French polish. I almost forgot uh, this corner that I glued up. I've got to fill with uh, wax, and uh, I figure the wax is the best thing to do. It's e easily uh, removed if it needs to, and if this uh, decides to move in the future, I think that's the best bet. I'm going to spray this with an aerosol shellac because I want to uh, build up some finish on the new wood in the raw areas. I've let this dry for a few hours. Now I'm going to sand just the areas with the new wood and the surrounding areas where I sanded the most to the bare wood. Uh, I'm going to use 320 and then I'll spray another coat of shock on those areas. All right, I've let this dry overnight. Uh, I want to go over it now with a gray uh, Scotch Brite pad and then I'm going to use some brown mahogany aerosol toner on some of my repair areas, just a little bit. Now I can immediately see that my uh, the brown mahogany was too red for this frame. I'm going to switch to uh, extra dark walnut. I just want to darken it a little bit. I definitely don't want it any redder. Now I'm going to go over these areas without tape with a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of medium brown walnut. It won't change the color that much, uh, hardly at all, but it will sort of blend in my repair areas. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm going to let that dry for a couple of hours. All right, there's a few, uh, little uh, edges and stuff where I sanded through a little bit, uh, I'm going to hit with a marker. Alright, now uh, I'm going to hit this frame uh, once again with a coat of uh, aerosol shellac. Now I'm going to use a, uh, I'm going to do a little French polishing on this frame. Uh, I'm going to use a product called Lac French, so I guess it's a it's a padding lacquer that I like using.
Okay, now I'm going to install this in the uh, outer frame and do a little more polishing. So here it is. This is a nice mirror. Uh, real period antique, American Empire, say about 1830. And uh, four bucks at Goodwill, plus about six hours of labor, but it looks pretty good.